So, Joanne, what is your assessment of what's really driving this? Is it a fundamental problem, or did demand just get ahead of supply? Yeah, that was a good summary, Emily, and, and both things are happening. Uh, number one, that the auto guys cut back in their uh, early year orders, and now they're trying to catch up. But also, it's just a fundamental increase in demand. Right, we have more data centers, more demand for smartphones, PCs uh, across the board, autos becoming more automated. Um, and at the same time, we also have an increase in the content of semiconductors across all of these things. So more units being produced and more content uh, per unit. So it's, it's really a, a demand storm. And it's not all bad news. It means that there's going to be an awfully long tailwind for demand for these semiconductor companies. And that's a good thing. So. If there's one thing you heard Ed talking there about how adding new capabilities is, is incredibly expensive, if there's one thing the Biden administration could do to help alleviate this, what would that be? Well, nothing in the short run, as, uh, as Ed explained. It, it takes a long time to build one of these new factories. It's multi-billion dollars to do it. There's certainly incentives, um, and certainly some companies have already started. Texas Instruments is one of them. And the opportunity really is, is going to be forward-looking. It's going to be in the future. It'll take some years to get more capacity in place. And provided that those companies still think that demand is out there, they'll, they'll go ahead and build. The U.S., in fact, is considering right now a $30 billion uh, bill to subsidize expansion of semiconductor manufacturing in the U.S. But, you know, you look at a company like Texas Instruments, it's really well positioned. You know, it has some extra capacity. It's building up some inventory. And they have long live chips. They don't, uh, they don't get out of date uh, as, as do some of the ones that go into, say, a smartphone. So the opportunity for investors is, is actually pretty exciting, especially after this recent sell-off. You get into a company like Texas Instruments or Broadcom that reported tonight with good numbers, really good cash flow, and they're exposed to all these end markets that are growing and have a real opportunity here. And so it just means it's a really long tailwind out there for investors to take advantage. And so you know this kind of sell-off, it's a real opportunity for investors. And we buy individual stocks for our clients, so we're able to pick and choose where to go and avoid some of these expensive stocks and tech in particular that are getting hurt by the higher real interest rates uh, that uh, people have been talking a lot about lately. Broadcom just reported they're a big Apple supplier. Do they give us a solid read on demand in any particular area? Yeah, they're pretty broadly exposed, as you said, Emily, but uh, their guidance is pretty solid, a little bit ahead. And uh, that tells us that the content gains they're seeing in the iPhone you know, are continuing. And they also have really good visibility to future iPhone models, and we expect them to gain content in a couple other places. Uh, so it's telling us that enterprise spending is picking back up. There's going to be more network spending, data centers, and they're also very exposed to storage, and we know there's a big demand for that. So the report was really good, ahead of expectations, and that cash generation they have enables them to pay at an over 3% dividend. They generally buy back shares or pay, pay down debt. So that's a, an investment we really like for our clients, both for the growth opportunity it provides inside a portfolio, for the value at which it's trading, and also that really nice dividend yield. So yeah, it's a good sign about demand, and I think it's a good opportunity uh, for investors. And look, uh, the experts have been telling us this, this always comes in cycles. I mean, how long do you think it'll be before there's an, an oversupply at some point? Yeah. Yeah, you know what's interesting at this point, Emily, is that it used to be, right, that semiconductors were mostly driven by PCs, right? Then it was smartphones added in. Now we're seeing semiconductors in a lot of different end markets, not just those two places, but servers, um, cars especially, medical devices in factory automation equipment. So the demand is a lot broader than it ever used to be. And because we're seeing demand rise across so many different end markets, it really looks like the tailwind here the length of this growth period is going to be longer than the usual cycle in semiconductors. And that's why we're seeing semi-equipment companies doing so well. And that's why we're seeing TSMC and others making plans to build more capacity. As we said earlier, it's going to take a while, but it does suggest that this semi-cycle has a lot longer to run. And so, you know, the sell-off in these stocks, I really think is unwarranted. It's a good opportunity to get in.